Hello everybody, welcome to my computer vision podcast. Today we are going to work on background subtraction. And as you might have guessed, it's about replacing the background. And it's the background of our video. So first I'm going to start my Ruby interpreter. And for these demos, I'm using my library, the Hornetsai library. And first I'm going to load the video for Linux extension. And then I'm going to load the X11 extension for displaying images. And I'm going to include the namespace. And then I can start with opening a camera. So that's the video for Linux camera. Uh, I can do it like this. And I pass it a post. I pass it a code block for selecting the mode. So, and I select the mode with a width and height of 640 times 480. And I just take the first mode which matches that. Uh, that seems to look alright. Okay. Um, let's see. When I read frames now, they are 640 by 480. And if I show the frames, that's one of the frames. And I can, of course, show frames in in a loop. So this is going. This is capturing frames in a loop now. So that's me. And now, in order to replace the background, I need to take a picture of the background. And in order to take a picture of the background, I need to remove everything in front of the background, including me, including myself. And now I have a picture of the background. And that's the background. <coughs> but simply subtracting the background is not really enough, but you can try that, how that would look like. So you grab a RGB image and you just subtract the background and it doesn't look very nice, it overflows and it's it doesn't work. It doesn't do what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to identify the background. And the way we do this, we need to define ourselves a function which gives us the absolute difference in color space. So I can use that now and I can now take the color space distance, Manhattan distance. Um, uh, I also need to normalize this because the range of this is exceeds the range of the graphics card. So if I normalize it, that's the way it looks like. So you can see the background is pretty much black. And as you might guess, as maybe you can guess the next step already, it, the next step is going to be thresholding. <coughs> so let's see how well that works. I've tried some thresholds earlier, so that's the threshold I'm going to use now. It's 38. And I say if it's above, then give me 155, otherwise give me 0. And that's how it looks like. It's not too bad, but you can still see some noise around here. So one possibility to know in order to deal with the noise, I'm going to take myself a test image. Oops. So that's a binary image, and I'm going to look at the components. So you have different components. <coughs> and you have one big component. So now I'll define myself a function which uh, finds me the largest component. 
So if we look at the components, there are 414 components. If you take a histogram, you will see that most of these components are very small, and then there's obviously the background component, and the other component that's me, I hope. So the way I get the largest component is like this. I take the histogram of the component image, a maximum plus one is the size of the histogram, and then I just use the argument maximum function. The argument maximum function returns an array, in this case with one element, which is the coordinate of the maximum, and in order to uh, but I need to ignore the first component with index 0, so I start from index 1 and later I need to add this 1 again and then as I just check for equal to id components equal id will give me a mask with the component so now these are the components and when I say largest should give me a binary image with the largest component. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, that looks pretty neat. You can see all the tiny little specks have disappeared. And what you can also do is you can dilate and erode uh, <coughs> in order to also fill out small holes in the component. Oh, that looks a bit better. And I can also smoothen the fringes. Yeah. And then this would look like this. <coughs> now if I take the image again, yeah, I take the image with the camera. I compute the components, how did I do that? Uh, and then now I can multiply the, the image back in to see what happens <coughs> and then you can see that's me minus background more or less so what we can do with this we can now run this in a loop so I read the image again then uh, I extract the components so this image minus background RGB ABS greater than the threshold, I extract the components and I get the largest component I convert it to a integer image I dilate it I wrote it, do a blur I, I make a smaller blur filter by specifying a, a load error of 0 0.1 and I multiply the image with this floating point mask and I run this in the loop and let's see how, the, the, how that looks like yeah, that's the result so the background has is pretty well segmented away uh, and now for some fun stuff I downloaded a video showing some clothes and I'm going to open that video now uh, wait a moment, I need to load the FFmpeg bindings first. So I use FFmpeg to read frames. Yeah, so I can now read uh, clouds. Uh, cloud from the clouds video I can read frames showing cloud. Showing clouds. So let's see how this looks like. Yeah, that's one of the frames. <coughs> Very nice. And I still have the mask, no. Um, 
but I have a test image. Let's see, uh, we had earlier this line of code where we show the image. Yeah. Oops, uh, that's uh, not correct. <coughs> I'll try to scroll back up. It's basically like that. Uh, so I read an image, a computer mask, and I say image times mask show. Yeah, that's how it works. And what's also possible now is to say I take the clouds at the cloud image and I multiply it with 1.0 minus mask. And we are almost there. That's background replaced now with clouds. And the next obvious step is of course to run this in a video. So I uh, copy the code here. <coughs> and I add code for reading a cloud image. Yeah, then the code for <coughs> thresholding and finding the components computing the largest component and finally we use this floating point mask to multiply the image and we use the inverse of the mask to put in the clouds and let's see how that works okay here we are again that's me and now you can see in the background clouds swelling around me and that's the background subtraction <coughs>